Derek's story has been called a geek's geek and a photographer's photographer. In addition to being digital media evangelist for O'Reilly Media, he's an author, blogger, editor, speaker, and a photographer whose work has received praise from other world-renowned photographers. Derek is the author of many books on digital photography. In addition, you can follow his work on O'Reilly's digital media site and on his own site, thedigitalstory.com. I think I'm live. Hello out there. I'm Derek Story, and we are going to talk about photography today, and I, I have some just great stuff I want to show you. Now, before I actually get into the presentation, uh, I want to mention a few things to you. One is for, for those of you that have seen me talk before, either live or on lynda.com, you know that I go fairly fast. I'm kind of a fast speaker, and I like to show a lot of pictures quickly. Well, this webinar, because of the technology that we're using, will force me to sort of slow down a little bit. So this, I look at this as an opportunity for personal growth uh, in order to be more, more relaxed during my presentation. So today will be the relaxed version of this talk. And um, I won't tell you that I've already had two cups of coffee, so we'll just uh, sort of bypass that little thing. And what I'm going to show you today are five ways to make your pictures look different than everyone else's. And so why, why would we care about that? Well, I think it's, it's important because photography is, for a lot of us, a form of personal expression, right? I mean, there are millions of photos being taken every day. And uh, that's great. And a lot of them are for personal history and, you know, things that are important to us. But a lot of times we like to share our photos with other people. And I think that when you share your photos with other people, I think there's a part of you that, that wants them to be impressed, that wants them to, to watch and be engaged. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you five little tricks today that you can slip into your slideshows and your snapshots and your photo presentations to other people to make them sort of sit up and take notice uh, of what you're doing. And then, of course, you know, you'll have the usual group shots and someone standing in front of a monument. That's all great, but I tell you, if you've got five or six of these little gems in there, you'll keep their attention during the whole time you're showing the stuff. So let's, let's go into a little bit here. Let me just, I'm in iPhoto. By the way, I'm using iPhoto right now, which is an application that I use a lot for the presentation because uh, if, I, if I do want to talk about editing or something, I can kind of slip into edit mode easily and then go back into presentation mode. It's, you know, it's, it's very photographic. But I want to tell you a little bit about who I am first. Uh, I'm Derek Story, and I'm the digital media evangelist for O'Reilly Media. And I have to tell you, it's probably one of the best jobs on earth because basically what I do is things like this. Uh, I also run our digital media site, our website on O'Reilly at digitalmedia.oreilly.com. And I run a virtual camera club called The Digital Story. And uh, how many of you out there are Digital Story uh, listeners? Please raise your hand. And, uh, yeah, I, see, I, I can see a few out there. So uh, The Digital Story, that's where we talk about stuff like this. This is, uh, you know, it's a virtual camera club. Anyone can participate. So, anyway, so everything that you hear and uh, see today, uh, you can probably find on The Digital Story. And also, you don't have to take notes. This is what's so cool about this. You can just sit back. Uh, Enjoy this, have a cold drink or coffee, depending on uh, you know what, what time of day it is where you are right now. Uh, but because all the notes and everything that's going on here uh, are in this book, this is a brand new book called The Digital Photography Companion, and it has all these tips in there. And then also we're going to be sharing, uh, we're recording this, and uh, you'll be able to download it separately. All right, well, let's get to the actual stuff itself. Okay, tip number one. You've heard it a million times, but I'm not sure. It's, for a lot of people, it never really sinks in. The first tip is to get close. Now, I had an old photography teacher. He was great because he would say, okay, you know, what you need to do to get a good shot is you got to get close. And then once you're close, get closer. And, uh, you know, we'd all kind of chuckle and stuff. But the fact of the matter is he was right. He was right. And I'm going to show you some examples of being close and then getting closer. Let's, let's, we'll, we'll go out to the vineyards. I'm, 
I'm up here in Sonoma County, uh, which is in Northern California. It's an hour north of San Francisco. And we, we grow grapes and, and we make wine. And then uh, we drink it. And that, that's basically, and then we, we work some too. Uh, so here's a shot. It's, it's, it's an okay shot, right? I wanted to take a shot of grapes. And uh, I got, you know, fairly close. I was somewhat happy with my closeness. But then, in the back of my head, I heard that old photography teacher say, and then get closer. So this next slide that will be coming up right now is the slide of getting closer. And you can see, and hopefully it's coming up on your, your computer right now, you can see the difference between the first shot where you're just sort of back a few feet, and then the second shot where you get in really tight, really tight. Now, how do you do this? How do you get in, you know, really tight? Well, every digital camera has this wonderful little function, and it's called close-up mode. And you can look for it. And the nice thing, there's good news and bad news with this. The good news is that the icon is fairly universal on all cameras. It's usually the picture of a flower. And I guess that's because when we think of close-up photography, a lot of times we think of pretty shots of flowers, which I love to do all the time. So that's the good news, is that here's the icon. The bad news is it could be located anywhere on your camera. And when I, when I teach photography, and this is even true uh, if you um, start using the Digital Photography Companion the book, is that that is a great tool for learning uh, photography, but you still need your manual. You will always need your owner's manual. And if you, if you don't know where it is right now, uh, either try to find it, or the good news is that almost every cam camera manufacturer that I know uh, makes it available online via PDF, and you can download it. And the thing that's cool about the PDF versions of your camera manual is that you can search. You know, instead of trying to you know, uh, flip through you know, four different languages to, to find you know, close-up mode, you can just open the PDF use the search box, search on close-up, and it will show you all the instances where that shows up in your camera manual. So anyway, so you have to find close-up mode. Now, a lot of times you can get as close as just a few inches. Okay, so there's, that's the, the macro photography. But there's also just getting closer to life in general. Now, we have another shot coming up on the screen here. And this is just the shot of ropes uh, at a cruise ship that, that's docked. And, you know, ropes, ropes are cool. By the way, these cruise ships spend like $100,000 on these ropes here. I mean, they're, they're really expensive stuff. So you never want to be in a situation if you're, if you ever become captain of a cruise ship, one of the last things you want to order is, you know, to, to cut the ropes if there's a problem because that's a very expensive thing. Okay, again, a nice shot. There's some color there and so forth. But then, Again, in the back of your mind, think, can I get closer? Is there another angle? Is there another way that I can record the shot? Now, the process that I usually go through when I'm doing this is that when I first see a shot, I take it. You know, because there's a chance that things could change. So you do want to take the shot when you first see it. Then what you want to do is, if you have time, if you have the ability, then try to work the shot. Try to work the shot after, after you've taken the first shot. So for instance, right now we have a picture coming up. I saw this while I was waiting for a cable car uh, in San Francisco. And it was a, a dad with his daughter, and she, she was having a great time. And you, know, you can tell that she's obviously affectionate uh, toward her dad, and, and he was totally into it. So it was a nice moment. So I took the first shot. But then the thing, again, Try to find a way to get closer. Try to find a way. Sometimes it means just stepping a little to the, in this case, stepping a little bit to the right and find another shot.